Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will cover the air to ground radar on the Viper, going over each submode and how to use them. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation on all the technical aspects of the air to ground radar and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial you will be able to use the air to ground radar effectively. Let's get into it. Radar modes. The quickest way to get to the air to ground radar is going to air to ground mode. If you press the first OSB along the left hand side of the MFD, the air to air radar modes will be displayed, and on the right hand side, the air to ground sub modes will be shown. They are ground map GM, ground moving target GMT, C, beacon, which is not implemented, and the last OSB puts the radar on standby. The next OSB is the range scale switching option. If it's set to manual, the range of the radar will not be changed if you move the cursor to the top or lower edges of your radar screen. If it's set to auto, the ranging will be changed automatically as you move the cursor around. If you're fine tuning your targeting, I suggest keeping this in manual to have more control over your radar display. After that, we have the field of view options, which are Norm, EXP, DBS1, and DBS2. DBS1 will provide the same FOV as with EXP, but with improved resolution, 8 to 1. DBS2 will provide an FOV roughly double the zoom of EXP and DSB1 with improved resolution, 64 to 1. Keep in mind that DSB1 and 2 are only available for the GM submode. You can also cycle through the field of view options by pressing the pinky button on your stick. The next OSB, override, puts the radar on standby. After that we have the control page. However, I won't cover this page, since none of the items on here are essential for operating the air-to-ground radar. The following OSB switches the backup bombing sensor to radar altimeter for altitude ranging. This is only used in case, for some reason, the automatic air-to-ground ranging isn't available. I recommend keeping this on barometric in most situations. After that, we have the freeze option. As the name indicates, this freezes the radar picture. Radar cursor movement is still possible with freeze activated. Keep in mind that switching the FOV will disengage freeze. With freeze activated, you will notice that a bold cross will be shown over the display. This is the representation of your aircraft over the picture, as I will now demonstrate. The following OSB activates snowplow mode. This mode unties the radar from any steer point and directs it on your current heading. Radar cursor movement isn't possible with snowplow mode. You will have to maneuver the aircraft in a way that puts the crosshair near the point you wish to target and then press TMS forward once to ground stabilize it. You can then fine tune your targeting and press TMS forward once more to designate a target. The next OSB is the cursor zero function. This removes any offset that you might have created by moving the sensors around. You can also do this by pressing TMS aft. The next OSB, sighting point select, is used along with the VRP function, which I will not cover on this tutorial. Along the left hand side of the MFD, you have the azimuth scan patterns. These can be A6 for 60 degrees, a3 for 30 degrees, and A1 for 10 degrees. Just like with the air-to-air -air radar, this narrows down the area you're scanning with your radar. With a wider area, you can cover more ground with less detail. With a narrower area, less ground will be scanned, but it will be with higher detail. Finally, just above, you have the displayed range scale, which can go from 10 miles all the way up to 80 miles. The same principle as before applies. 
If you're trying to scan out to an extended distance, smaller contacts on the ground might not be detected. On the lower right of the display, you have the time on target, meaning the time left until you're over the point where your cursor is. On the left, you have the cursor's position relative to bullseye, and on the lower left corner, you have your aircraft's position relative to bullseye. The ground map mode should be used to detect and target buildings or stationary units. It is also used to map out the terrain, picking out elevations, roads, etc. In this example, the group of contacts ahead is an airbase. I expand the FOV, look for a target, and then press TMS forward once. I can then engage straight away if I had JDAMs for example, or I can go to the TGP page and it will be looking at the point I designated. Ground moving target, as the name indicates, is used to locate and track vehicles that are moving. The operation of this mode is exactly the same as before. Move your cursor to a contact Press TMS forward once to designate it, and then engage the target as needed. The C mode should be used to locate targets on the water. These should be detected regardless if they are moving or stationary. The procedure to designate a target is the same as before. And there we have it. The air ground radar is an excellent tool to locate and engage ground targets by pointing a sensor at it or employing weapons against it. It is especially useful at locating moving targets. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.